Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk about Across the Obelisk. And Across the Obelisk is a groundbreaking new roguelite in my opinion. It's a co-op roguelite deck builder that creates an experience that you honestly can't find anywhere else. And before we jump into the review, I do just want to let you guys know that I was given a review copy of the game in order to make some videos for you guys. I never let that influence my reviews, I just like staying as transparent as possible for you all. So Across the Obelisk is a deck builder similar to games like Slay the Spire. However, you have a party of four different classes. You have your mage, your hunter, your healer, and your warrior. And the game can totally be played single player, and if so, you just control all of the characters yourself, but I have played this game exclusively with three other friends to make up a party of four. And right off the bat, you and your friends start out in a town. Here you can upgrade your starting cards, buy new cards for your deck out of any of the cards you've previously unlocked, you can remove cards, and you can even buy passive items from a shop. What's so cool though is that you're all in the same town as each other. So you all have your own unique class cards, so you can't really interact with each other there, but when you go to the item shop, each item can only be bought by one player. So you have to communicate as a group what items would be good for what player. And once you all are ready to embark on your adventure, you see the map and each player can vote on what direction to go on. There's random events, enemies, means boss fights, secrets, and more. So when you get to an enemy encounter, you and your teammates along with the enemies are put in a turn order depending on your speed, and on your turn you can use your energy to play your cards and attack enemies, heal teammates, shield yourself, and more. And every class is very different from each other, and they all have different strategies and roles to fill. The combat itself is almost like a combination between Slay the Spire and Darkest Dungeon. So some attack cards can only hit the front enemy, and some can hit any enemy. So as an example, I have mainly played the Hunter, and he has a lot of ranged attacks that allow me to target enemies in the back, which is really awesome. You also can't see the enemy intent unless you apply a special status effect on them that allows you to see what they plan to do. And the game is actually extremely focused on status effects and resistances. So there's like 15 different types of damage in the game from slashing to fire to holy, and every enemy has a whole list of what they're resistant to or weak to. So a rock golem might be like 50% resistant to slashing damage while a tree actually might be weak to it. And along with the resistances, there are like a million different status effects like bleed, poison, fire, electric, and more that you can apply on enemies and friendlies that all tick down by one each turn and do something different. And I'm not gonna lie, at first the combat is a little bit intimidating. You see a million different types of damage and status effects and resistances, but once you put a couple of hours in the game it all starts to make sense. The one thing I'll say about the combat that I actually do not like is how the shields work. In the game, you can use certain cards to give yourself either shield or block, and one of them gives you shield for that turn in particular, and the other gives you shields next turn. And it just feels super redundant, and I wish that all block was just one type of block and it was permanent like some other roguelites. Obviously, all the block cards would have to be rebalanced, but it's just a pet peeve I have when it comes to roguelites that you all probably already know about if you watch the channel a lot. One cool thing about the combat though is that your mana doesn't reset each turn, so if you don't have any cards you want to play, you can just end your turn and save your mana for the next turn. But the last thing I want to say about the combat is that it is just so cool being able to watch all the other players take their turns in multiplayer, especially when you have cards like the Hunter does that allows you to let another player look at their top four cards of their deck and discard ones that they don't want, like there's actually some interaction with the other players there. And it's just so much fun being able to strategize together and get builds that synergize with each other and give each other advice on each person's turn. And when you win combat, each player can choose from three different cards or some currency if you don't want any of the cards, and some of them can already be upgraded depending on how fast you completed combat. And this is the main way you unlock new cards, and like I said earlier, at the start of each run and at each town you go to, you can buy any cards to add to your deck that you've previously unlocked. So once you have a lot of them unlocked, you can kind of go for specific builds right from the beginning of the game. 
And so you keep going through the map and occasionally you'll find random encounters that all are super unique and have different options each player can vote on, which all have different outcomes. And sometimes if you have a specific character or item, you can choose secret situational options that might actually give you a unique outcome. And while you're on your adventure and slaying monsters and getting random events, you can actually level up your characters, which makes them insanely powerful. Like as the hunter, I had a level up where all of my ranged attacks were one chance cheaper to play. And you'll also find increasingly rare items, so I also had an insanely legendary item that allowed me to draw another card every time I played a ranged attack, so I kind of had like this insane cycling build going on. And so obviously you try to go as far as possible, and it's definitely an adventure because each run can take a couple of hours to complete. But whenever you win or lose, you're going to want to continue playing the game non-stop, one because the game is just incredibly fun, but two, there is an absurd amount of amazing out of game progression. Firstly, you can actually level up your characters separately from the in game way, which all it does is kind of just increase their stats slightly, but you can kind of choose which stats to bump up, which is pretty cool. Uh, you'll also find supplies for your town when playing, which can be used to upgrade the town itself, which can do a huge variety of things like making removing cards free or even adding entirely new mechanics like a pet shop to the game. And on top of that, there are entirely new heroes to unlock that completely change the game up as well. And the game just recently launched in early access, but I have to say it could almost be a fully launched game. It has an insane amount of polish, the multiplayer works great, there's hundreds of hours of content and progression if you're addicted to the game like I am, and it's just such a unique experience that I honestly just need to tell everyone I know about it. And I haven't played the single player yet, but from what I've heard, it's still very fun because you get to control all of the characters at the same time, and that includes an entirely new aspect to the game, but if you have friends to play with, I would definitely say that that's the way to play this game. So for me, it's just such an amazing and new experience because I'm the biggest fan of roguelite deck builders, and now that I can play an amazing one while messing around with three of my friends is huge. And speaking of which, if you want to see what the four player co-op looks like and want to, you know, hear some banter and everything, uh, definitely check out my Let's Play series on the game because we go through some hilarious moments and get some awesome synergies together. But if you have played across the obelisk or just from watching gameplay, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like roguelites as much as I do, then consider subscribing and ringing that bell like all the big boy YouTubers say to get notified when more Across the Obelisk content comes out or some more roguelite reviews. But if you're going to be grinding out some Across the Obelisk, then I wish you luck and see you all next time.